Hi, I'm Grant Rayner. Megan O'Donnell. Emma Tardo. Yeah, I'm Josh Byer. We're testing a couple of hourglasses with different temperatures, as well as different types of rocking motion, um, as well as a dead reckoning test and a critical baking test. We have John Harrison and Neville Maskelin. And we're going to test to see if they're both accurate at the same time. We're going to flip them over and see if uh, all the sand gets deposited in the glass at the same time or different. Let's check it out. Three, okay. two, one, go. <laughs> So this is our data from our first test, just a normal test at room temperature comparing the three hour glasses we had. As you can see, there seems to be a variation based on which side you're flipping on, and it seems to be pretty consistent for all of them. And it seems like the William Harrison hourglass has much less of a time variation as compared to the masculine hourglass and John Harrison hourglass. Oh, the oven hot! Oh, oh, ah, oh. Got a hot date this weekend. Put a couple hourglasses in the oven. I'm hoping that. It'll uh, make the glass expand and time will go by faster. Can't wait. Making the sand inside them expand more than the glass and it's just taking more time. Oh man, the weekend's never gonna get here. The weekend's here, the weekend's here. It finally made it, I finally made it. Here are our results. You can see as the temperature increases, the period of the hourglass is increasing as well. Okay, so today we're going to do the freezer test. So we're going to see how having them in the freezer affects the period. Alright, ready, set, go. Well, one of them isn't even starting. Oh, okay, well... Neither of them. So the sand's really cold. Um, you can kind of see it's stuck together. Um, if you look closely here, you can see it's stuck right there on the side. It's not coming through. So you can see the sand kind of clumps together as it gets colder. Oh, my sand's not moving at all. Hang on. Them sand will come down, but. That's about it. See? The period then, so. If I tap them together, tap them on the ground, so you can see sand falls, so. So we had a little bit of a natural disaster and broke one of our hourglasses. Bensky disapproves. <laughs> so this is the results of the freezer test. As you can see, we had a lot of variation over like the tests. And this is the John Harrison hourglass, which unfortunately after the second test is life right here. And his son William took over in the future. But as for the freezer test, uh, we have a lot of variation. Some of them were over 15 minutes, some were around nine minutes. So. You can tell that in cold conditions, an hourglass is not accurate at all. Hurry up, Travis. We're almost out of time. Okay, here comes the dry ice test. You can feel a temperature difference between the stagnant air up here and the CO2 sublimation gas right here. So it's pretty interesting. And you see if I can put my hand in here and... <gasps> Just kidding. <laughs> It's actually just, just gas, so we're going to see if this affects the, uh, the rate of the hourglass. Alright, cool. Three, two, one, go. Here's the data from the dry ice test. 
In each instance, you can see with William Harrison, he didn't show any variation between the standard temperature and pressure test. But we did see this little one outlier right here for uh, Neville Maslin, and that was due to sand cleppage. But uh, ultimately, we didn't see any significant change in either one of the hourglasses. Testing these hourglasses to see how accurate they are under different conditions. This is gonna be like pretending like, oh no, I'm on a ship, but it's like there's a tornado. I think it'd be a hurricane on water, wouldn't it? Um, tsunami? I don't know. Tornadoes are usually on land. Whatever. Here's the results from our spinning test. You can see as the speed's low, it pretty much doesn't do much to it, and then it gets to a certain speed, and the accuracy pretty much goes out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Josh, and uh, I'm going to be doing a simulated rocking test right now. I'm going to be running with both of these hourglasses to see if the time varies with me shaking the hourglasses. So, here it goes. All right, I'm ready. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Yeah! Oh, gosh. It's really awesome. Is he gonna keep that pace for five minutes? Like a boss? Go, Josh! <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah? <laughs> ready, go! All right. What time are we at? Uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. Is the period affected? I don't know, we'll find out. Yeah. Right. Are you getting close? Yeah. Sweet. Totally Ready, yeah. go. <laughs> Such a dramatic start. <laughs> How you doing? going by so slow! Here are the results from our running test. You can see the Megan's smooth running style. Had a very similar period to our control. However, for the rest of us, the shaking motion did increase the period of the hourglasses. <laughs> oh, are you steering backwards? Or am I? Am I <laughs> 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 We're going to do like the awesome. Then we go. Alright, we'll see you over there. Alright. Approaching shore. Ah, oh, they've approached shore. So we lost two minutes in a, what was it, a 12 minute journey? Yeah, I experienced uh, quite a bit of turbulence and currents out there. On some trouble with the dead reckoning, it was pretty tough to do to get him in. Have it tangled up. Uh, we got an extra knot. It's cool to go straight as well. Like, yeah, it was very difficult to be able to maintain a steady direction. It, we had to fight the current and the wind at the same time, so it was a little difficult. Yeah. And is that this is uh, this is definitely not a very accurate um, measurement. Okay, as you guys uh, have noticed, the with the hourglasses, the each one each one of the different hourglasses change with time, and when you flip them, the time changes, so they're not very accurate. And they're not very accurate. Uh, with uh, temperature, as the temperature increases, the time increases. When the temperature decreases, time decreases, so they're inversely proportional. And with the dry ice, it seems unaffected. The next we tested was rocking motion. When you're doing a running test, as in carrying them in your hands, we found that the timing is really off and it's a lot higher and it's erratic. And for the spinning test, we found that the time was unaffected until you reach a certain threshold speed. We found a time difference of paddling across the bay, which was about a 12 minute trip, got two minutes of air, and that maintaining a steady heading was also 
almost impossible with the winds and currents. Uh, critical test, we cooked the cookies, and it's up to you guys to decide how they turned out. Bensky approved. <laughs>